Hello to all of you. Namaste. Welcome to our Sunday session. What a joy to be able to join. Hello, Baby Yoda. Good to see you as well. <laughs> uh, uh, how blessed are we to be waking up, to be snapping to attention out of this hypnotic trance that we have been in. It begins by realizing that we have been hypnotized, indeed. When we realize that we've been looking at something that isn't really there, that isn't real. And yet there is a moment where the fingers snap, the signal is given. The signal that we decided before allowing ourselves to fall into a trance, to see a world or to see whatever it is we see that never was truly real, but which we believed was. But then that moment comes. It's much like saying that the alarm clock goes off in the morning. And if you wonder who set that alarm, you remember very quickly, it was me. I'm the one who set the alarm. I'm the one who decided when I was going to wake up. I'm the one that made the decision. And that's right now. Well, the alarm clock is going off. The fingers are being snapped. This is the moment that you chose to remember that you are one with God, that there is only one thing happening. All you need to do is open up your eyes. And while we're in this trance, just for a moment, it's easy for us to look around and to see people or groups or others who are living in what appears to be a very different reality. We look at them and we wonder, how could you possibly think that? What has gotten into your mind that you would believe X, Y, and Z? Well, it's very simple. We've been hypnotized, not just the other group that we think is wrong. There is no other group to be wrong. I need to take full responsibility. I need to hear that alarm, the finger is snapping, and wake up. Once again, it's very easy to put that onto another group. And I think a lot of us have been seeing that quite a bit lately. We look at other groups who have a leader, really, you know, fallen into a cultish sort of way of following one person, no matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter how insane it may appear to us. We saw a lot of that happening last week, and we wonder, how can someone possibly think that? This is completely unreasonable. But then I lose the attention where it really belongs, which is on me. Yes, indeed, we have been hypnotized. We've been running around a, a stage floor, flapping our wings like a chicken, barking like a dog, because a hypnotist said that's what we should do. And we could spend lifetime after lifetime, if we want, trying to correct that from inside the hypnotic trance or from inside the dream. But there is a more simple answer. And that simple answer is just wake up. Leave it all behind. There is nothing here to hold you anymore. Because you have, as we've been saying, a sufficient amount of light, a sufficient amount of brightness within, within you to remember the truth that is always true, that could never change your holiness. That's what wakes you up from this trance. And this is the moment. So I want to share something very quickly with you. I just wrote it a few minutes ago. And remember, this is your or the master teacher within you, speaking directly to you. This is not me or some other being that you identify as higher or lower, or brighter or smarter than you. This is the master teacher that is within you, snapping its fingers. So listen to this. What does a hypnotist do to bring someone out of a trance? They snap their fingers or make a noise that wakes them up. A person may have been hypnotized into believing that they're a chicken scratching at the floor or a dog running around on all fours. 
But when they hear the sound that the hypnotist programmed in advance, the snapping of the fingers, they wake up. And remember that the idea of being a chicken or a dog was just that, an idea. It's just an idea, and it was never really true. Before the person was put into the trance, the hypnotist said to them, when you hear me snap my fingers, you'll return to this room. That's what the hypnotist tells them in advance. So now the person knows that they can wander off into an unreal world and safely return to who they really are. They convince their own mind that there's someone that they are not, living in a world that isn't real. But somewhere deep within them, they know that they are safe. They know they can return to the real world. So, all I'm doing is snapping my fingers together and breaking the hypnotic spell that you've been under. Remember, this is the master teacher within you speaking directly to you. Snapping his fingers together and breaking the hypnotic spell. Remember, all of this was programmed in advance. You decided to fall into the trance where the impossible seemed possible. And you also decided upon a signal that would break that trance. And this is that signal. This is the moment you open your eyes and remember who you are. My job is just to activate the signal or the snapping of the fingers. That's what's happening right now. Are you willing to see that? Are you willing to hear that? Well, I hope the answer is, is yes, because at least that's a step in the right direction. The truth is there's still a lot of unwillingness inside of us. And that's why it's important to stay humble. That's why it's important for us to never say, I got this. The moment you think you got it is the moment it evaporates. You're back in the dream. You're back in the trance. Let it get you. Don't try and get it. Just be willing. Begin by realizing, yes, it's true, I'm, I'm in a trance, I've been hypnotized. And it, it's not about looking at this group over there and, and saying, how can you possibly believe that? Because then I'm not looking at myself and saying, how could you possibly believe that you could ever be separate from God, from all that is? Wake up. Yes, you've been in a dream. Yes, you've been hypnotized. But the signal that was determined in advance is right now. You're hearing it right now. So, I'm gonna turn it over to our dear sister, Vicki, and let her put out her signal into this amazing joining that we have. Good morning, Vicki, or good afternoon. Good morning. Yeah, good afternoon, Jimmy, thank you. Well, I'm really excited because I've been, this has been going on in my mind uh, for a few days now because I wanted to write a little pamphlet for some of the kids that used to live with me on how to be happy. And you, you played right into it. So what I'm seeing is we break the hypnotism when we realize somewhere that everything around us isn't quite what it seems. Now people do that by desperation or they do it by greater desire for truth or holiness. but outside completely and that's enough when jesus said seek ye first the kingdom where is that kingdom and how do i seek it and the answer is very simple in that word surrender i don't know where the kingdom is but it's not out here so it must be in here and there's certainly enough information through our culture to believe that that it is within so if we surrender our thinking, oh, the government is this, the people are that, problems with health are this, and say, again, I don't know, but here I am, Lord. Here I am at the gate of the kingdom. Okay, at least I got the location of the kingdom. It's within. I'm not going to look out. It's within me because the kingdom is the land 
of fear is impossible and joy without opposite. And the reason that's so is if we go to the kingdom and say simply, here I am, I'm listening, and do nothing but simply do this, follow the prompts that come from within, whether to, it's to drink a glass of water, to read a book, to call someone on the phone, <clears throat> simply do it. That's called living by vocation, living by the calling, living by the spirit, living by your master teacher, the, the Christ within, the, the light within. That's how we follow that yellow brick road. We listen for the call and we don't fill up that space until we have a call. It may be just to rest. It may be to take a walk, but live by the call. And I'm asking, I say this to myself, and I would tell my girls that lived with me, just do it for one day. Because all the words and all the books and all the teachings don't amount to a pile of beans until you experience it. Then you have your own certainty, and then you'll want to do nothing but that. Nothing but that. And that is how you live with the government upon the light within you, not the external government, because then you find out when you live in the kingdom, everything you need is given. It's provided. All you have to do is listen and ask, oh, I need a pair of shoes. And I'm telling you, a pair of shoes are going to show up. Or I, I, I need to know this or that. And if we're quiet and we don't fill it up with the hypnotic ideas of out there, the inner state fulfills the needs, we become very certain and grateful and want to do nothing but bless and share what's been given to us because there's no need. It's need fulfilled and there's nothing to fear. I'm not afraid of the government. I'm not afraid of some contagious disease because I live in the kingdom by listening. Simply, here I am, Lord, day and night, and I ask, what is it? What right now? Right now. Not you know, I'll do this once a day in the morning. Oh, no, this is a way of life. This is 100% baby, not 50% maybe. This is 100%. And it is impossible not to land in joy without opposite. It is impossible not to experience nothing to fear and to have truly all what we used to think of as needs, everything met generously with baskets left over to share mm -hmm. so just go start hypnotism is looking outside for whatever we think we need or reference ourselves or identify ourselves by the outside this is okay i got that i'm not going to be hypnotized i'm going to reference everything by the inside but i don't know about the inside what does that mean find out find out show up and say here i am i'm showing up Show me the kingdom. I'm all yours. And wait there. And then listen and follow the prompts. The prompts are coming all the time. For every one of us, no matter how densely hypnotized we think we are, if we ask one unequivocal question and, 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 and open-heartedness that asks and says, here I am, show me your way, thy will be done. Show me your way right now, just for this minute, for this next 10 minutes. Do that for any one day. Certainty will be yours and the miraculous way will have been opened up and you'll never want to go back. Mm. That's what I think about that. <laughs> Thanks for asking. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. The effort of Thanks, the Jerry. Kingdom. Well, you, you are snapping your fingers today, girl. I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Let's, let's hear from so Jerry. We, go ahead. Well, you know, Jimmy, as I uh, turn the camera so we can see Teddy. Can't quite see him yet. There we go. Oh, did you get muted, Vicky? Oh, yeah, Vicky, you accidentally muted yourself. There you go. Okay, you know, I was thinking when you, you know, the inner master teacher, because it is, is as above, so below, as within, so without. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting. He, he used to say something in the forgetting is included with the remembering. Um, and when you step out for a second, you see it in total. And you see that the forgetting is included in the remembering. 
and it's just as much part of the remembering as because it's helpful. Um, so once you step out for a second, you have a whole new perspective. And then the fear of stepping out sort of starts to dissipate and you step out more and more and you see it from a totally new perspective all the way around. Um, and there's a certainty that comes that there is no one's excluded. Um, everybody's already included in. And I think there's a line, of course, we're merely watching what has already passed as if it's happening now. Yes. And that's a particular perspective that you have when you do step out for a second. And, and there are instances when we think we got it, but the getting it is including in the forgetting. And when you see it from the totality, you, you can use both the remembering and the forgetting to um, achieve the purpose that we're given, which is a total awakening um, that's all inclusive and um, nothing's excluded. And, and that's the process that we seem to be in. Um, and it always helps to remember that. It helps me to remember that today, especially. So I'm, I'm, I, it's, it, it's just sort of an interesting perspective. Once you step out for a second, you can never look at it the same way. And um, once you do that, and the joy of that stepping out gets included with the, the, the being in it, and it's a whole different reference and you experience this in an entirely new way. It can no longer ever be the same, um, although it may feel the same for a second. The feeling is helpful to the remembering. Mm, thank you, Teddy. Thank you, Vicki. You know, you reminded me of a song that I used to love, I still love. Um, many, many years ago when I was 22, um, Linda, who was my wife, uh, introduced me to Ken Kais Jr. You may remember him. He wrote the famous book, The Handbook to Higher Consciousness, back in the 70s. And there was there were a lot of musicians around him. And there was one singer who used to sing this song. Remembering and forgetting. That's the game that we play. You drift so far, you forget who you really are. Then you remember that love is the way to remember. Remembering and forgetting. They're just like that. Thanks so much. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn it over now. And